there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market here with August 2022's Pirate Plunder Picks, also known as the top five Magic the Gathering products that I think are good buys right now. So what we do for our patrons is I try to scour through all of the products that are available for order and give you my top five picks for the month. There's a lot of repetition from month to month as uh, many of these products stay on the list. However, there are some goodies for this particular month that I think are great buys. So if you aren't a patron, I highly suggest you go check out patreon.com slash rogue deck builder link in the description below and see if this is a good fit for you this is a crazy market i'm going to be releasing a video later on uh, for the market monday uh, talking about how crazy this market is on the one hand you have just insane sales when it comes to things like double masters and surprisingly there are some things that are out of stock now and the prices are really starting to increase things like forgotten realms commander decks who would have thought that those would start going up and i think even like Baldur's gate commander decks continue to have these really high sales uh, whereas you have all these other dead products though that are going for just crazy crazy low prices in fact we're starting to see some sales that i'm gonna have to to uh do a post about for like theme boosters i haven't seen theme boosters ever so low and i'm still trying to to um decide if i mean how low do theme boosters need to get before they're actually worthwhile to buy i know i did break apart forgotten realms theme boosters because they did they had uh, I think I've done it with a couple of them. I think it did, was Dragon's Approach out of, was out of Strixhaven or out of one of the sets uh, where theme boosters were actually profitable. And same thing Forgotten Realms where Deadly Disputes were profitable to break open theme boosters because you could rely specifically on those. And I think Theros had one too uh, for the green Theros booster boxes. But anyway, that's a, a discussion for another day. Um, all I'm saying is that we have this weird market with um, extremes. So you have products that are just absolutely dead where distributors are just blowing them out uh, and giving them away for as, I mean, as low as possible, trying to sell them as low as possible. I think they're losing money on them or if Wizards just gave them the green light to sell at a certain cost. And then you have on the other end of the, like I said, some products that are out of stock now that I thought weren't going to be out of stock quite yet like commander decks from sets that um, were available for quite some time and then you have of course double masters and now dominaria that people are just you know salivating over and we had incredible sales for magic the gathering that's just record breaking after record breaking uh, quarter after quarter so just a very awkward time for the Magic the Gathering market. Um, we have see, started to see some other stabilization in other areas. Again, well, I'm going to talk about more of this on my Market Monday video. Go ahead and check that out later on tonight. Usually releases in the night is when I get around to doing the Market Monday videos. All right, so top five products. Let's start off with one of them that I think is a not the greatest price, uh, but it is something that I was surprised they didn't bump up the price to these ones because Kamigawa and New Kapena specifically have been bumped up for set boosters. Set boosters and drop boosters have now been bumped up to the Dominaria price. So if you're looking to get a, a order in for um, the, especially as Kamigawa set boosters, is now the like 102, I think is what set boosters new price is because the price increase is going to start with Dominaria, but they've retroactively done that with what we call in-print sets. So the non-rotating sets are considered still in-print. I think they've changed their uh, their tune on what is considered in-print. So all of the Strixhaven, all of, uh, so what would it be? Strixhaven, Forgotten Realms, all the rotating sets are not considered in-print anymore. They're just going to let those supplies run out. And as soon as they're out, they're out because uh, they've anticipated they will not go out of stock before rotation happens. Uh, but the ones that they have, given their um, I guess their promise, Wizards of the Coast like, tries to keep standard sets in stock that are currently seeing play. Uh, and then, so the rotating ones, so like, what would that be? That'd be Kamigawa, that would be New Kapena right now. Those aren't going to rotate. They've already upped the price of those uh, set boosters and draft boosters. However, collector's boosters, uh, Kamigawa got a restock of collector's boosters. It's one of the only second printings that I can remember for collector's boosters. And they are still available. I think the price of them are 190 for for uh, Kamigawa collector boosters. So I think that is a really good price uh, as they're going on on TC Player for the, the cheapest one is, is 202 with $10 shipping. That's a great price for Kamigawa. And I notice that they're almost out of stock at the distributor level. So I would not wait for Kamigawa Neon D Dynasty or Collector Boosters. This is one of the best-selling sets of all time. There's, you still have expensive cards like Wandering Emperor um, at 79, Bazeju, Borderless Foil at 70, 71. This is high, high value cards that are still contained in those Collector's Boosters. There was one of the, the Collector's Boosters at one point, I thought got, got all up to like, what, 280, almost 300? Let's go ahead and check the, the, the price history. They were, uh, okay, yeah, 280 on May uh, is the high price they got. And then they got this reprint here. 
And they've stayed steadily, though, and started to go back up from their low at 205. So this is a great time to get in Kamigawa Nino Dynasty if you're wanting to, to have these long term. I would not wait for Kamigawa. Uh, next up is going to be the Commander Legends. There's going to be two products that I, I recommend right now. This is not a bad set, but this particularly, I think if people are forgetting that Collector's Boosters has as many packs in these Collector's Boosters as other sets. One of the problems with, with what I've heard from um, Baldur's Gate, Commander Legends uh, Baldur's Gate, is you can't compare apples and apples with set boosters and draft because there's less packs. I believe set boosters had 18 packs in them and draft booster had 24 packs in them. But collectors did not. So you can compare apples to apples with collector boosters. And they were, I believe the, the MSRP, or, or I mean, not MSRP, distributor price for these um, originally was like 240 for collector's boosters. So they considered this like a premium set. So the price kind of reflected the same thing with draft and so draft and sets were, were comparable to the, the price of draft and sets of other uh, sets. However, uh, but they had less packs. So that's where you had to make the adjustment. Well, you only get 18 packs versus 30 packs for set boosters. You only got 24 versus uh, the 36 for, for draft boosters. And so you had to kind of equate that into the pricing. And then it was like, okay, how, th these are actually, you know, quite m much more expensive than, um, the, you know, the, the in standard sets at the moment. However, collector boosters, it is a one for one with how many are contained in the, the packs. You still get the 12 as you do in all the other uh, uh, collector's packs. So these are on special this week. I don't know how long the sale will, will last. I believe it's 145 out the gate for collector's boosters. That is an insane price for something that originally went for 240. And this is not a bad set. I'm going to reiterate that. I do not think that this is a bad set. I think it will age well long term. And as you can see, there are still some expensive cards like the ancient uh, copper dragon. There's still like the ancient silver dragon in here. You have a whole rare cycle that I think will recover with the... Um, the commander lands, I guess is what you call them. And there are a lot of staples in the, um, like this, this, this archivist of Ogma that I think are going to be down the road, either banned or, uh, they're going to be, you know, $30 rares. If they don't get reprinted, there's, there's a lot of these type of cards and that are, they're hidden within this, this price range between all the, you know, the, 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 the $3 to, uh, $10 range. And you can also get, if you go over to uh, the all cards here with, with Commander, there's a lot of them that are available in collector form. So collector has more, you can get more of the cards uh, than just the ones that are contained in, you know, the draft, which is, shows on empty goldfish there. And so there are a, a lot more other cards uh, that are worth more that you can get here. Like, I mean, the prices aren't bad here for um, some of these full art cards. And this is exactly how you get them. It's going to be in the, the commander ones. So look at these all the way from, from tons of them in the 50 to hundred dollar range, uh, that you can get in the collector, uh, packs. So I think this is a steal of a deal. I mean, TC player just keeps drop, 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 drop. I mean, it's just going down to, to nothing. You can get, get them. The last one sold was 170 and, but at the 135 or the 140, 135, 140, I can't remember the price out the gate, uh, for them. 145, I think it was 145, uh, price out the gate from the distributor. That's still a pretty good deal. You're still saving a lot of money if you uh, then going on the TCG uh, player route. So this is one I think that you should snag up. I think it's going to be great. I'll have to do another one of those videos comparing like a double masters versus the collector's box from um, Baldur's Gate because I, I it's there is a lot of hidden value in this set and it's going to be very similar to Conspiracy, Conspiracy 2 uh, and Battle Bond. If these cards don't get reprinted, these are going to look very, very good in you know a year or two years as they do have a lot of staples in the Commander format. All right, so another product from Commander Legends I still think is a very, very good buy is these pre-release packs. I can still get them for $11 a piece. Um, so it comes out to like $155 or one, uh, yeah, $155 I think for a whole... Um, case of them or 165 i don't know if to do the math on that uh, for the commander legends pre-release case this i think is a better route than going draft boosters you do only get three packs in there but you do get a promo and a, a die and a promo and it's a pre-release packs are something that i think long term age better than like booster packs they are a little bit harder to sell uh, but they are something that people do continue to have demand for and you'd be surprised how easy they are to sell on like ebay or tc player um in like a year or two when you can still get draft boosters you, you can't get pre-release packs and that is it's held true for a long time uh, for these particular products. So again, I think that it's just the, the foil card, the promo puts it over the top of going the other route and these being discounted quite significantly too, down to 11 a pack are pretty good. And you can see that there are some of them going for 12, but then, you know, $10 shippings, 
uh, 14 with five dollar shipping so this is a pretty good deal uh, for the pre-release packs for Baldur's Gate next up we still have the collector's booster I don't have quite the good deal that I have for collector's boosters they aren't 112 or 115 for the really really super cheap price that I could get them for they are now I believe 135 is the cost for collector's boosters but this is another set that I don't think is a terrible set it's it's collector's boosters from Nuka Bennett. they have the land cycle they have a lot of high-end cards here you can see the, the Urbras hidden praetor card for Exian foil you have a lot of these other ones that are going for 40 50 bucks ledger treasure is go, is a legacy and modern staple now and then you also have the the uh the vehicle that is uh keeps seeing more and more play in modern you have the land cycle from uh this set which is if you look at uh uh, Ikoria just continue to go up, up, up because these are fetchable lands. The commander players love them. Um, they actually do see a little bit of play in like Pioneer and Modern. So uh, I think that this is going to be kind of the sleeper set. Nuka Penna is, in my opinion, better than like Crimson Vow, better than uh, Midnight Hunt, better than even like Strixhaven. Like in the in the sets that have been released in the past few years. Streets of New Capenna, unfortunately, was just jammed in between Double Masters and Kamigawa, so it looks horrible. But if you l compare it to other sets, I actually think it's one of the better sets that has been released in the past few years. And should age well, it's not rotating, um, so we'll have all that standard play. Maybe we'll get influx in like standard players. Uh, maybe it will have a, a resurgence. We see Magic the Gathering usually go in these cycles. If it is going to be the kind of the pro tour, um, right now it's Pioneer, but if it's going to be the, the emphasis for the next pro tour or whatever they call it, whatever pro tours are now, um, you can see standard cards go up in value and Streets of Companion will be, I think will be a very, very highly sought after set at that point. So collectors from New Capenna, I still think are a great deal. I think you got to think commander uh collectors are going to go up with dominaria i think the price of them are going to be like 205 for collectors so if you look back at, at um the uh, new capenna age era of collectors they're going to be a bargain to begin with let alone with the discount of being able to be purchased at very very low prices right now there are a few other collector boosters that are having a sale from alternate distributors i think you can get like afr and crimson Val for cheaper than 180 at the moment uh you can pm me for those prices however this is the one that i pick for this month uh, last but not least, Modern Horizons 2 set booster. I am still all in on this product. There was a restock of Modern Horizons. You can see about here in early July. It's gone all the way down to 215 on the TCG market price. I think I can get these for 195 is my cost for these. It's around that. that. And you can just message me or you can look at the, the uh, commonly ordered items sheet that I post for patrons for the exact price I can get them for. Modern Horizons is just, just the slam dunk of a set. It's the problem with Modern Horizons is just printed like crazy. It had pre-release packs, it had bundles, it had um, sleeve boosters, ad collectors, it had had so many things. for So for like a premium things, if you compare it to Modern Horizons 1, Modern Horizons 1 just had what just the draft that's all it had didn't have all the other stuff added on to that so this was just a overprinted set is what is the problem with this but it's got fetch lands in it it's got ragavan in it it's got murktide regent if you actually come over here and look at the commonly played cards in modern there are so many cards from modern horizons like dress down here's like a sleeper card dress down endurance all this endurance cycle here subtlety fury ragavan um just tons and tons of cards that were in this set even on the uncommons it is just a powerhouse in modern and commander also plays a lot of these cards like crazy in here you got the urza uh, land uh, so many cards that are most powerful cards ever printed that have been put in this modern horizons too and so it's going to age well two or three years down the road i think it's me a premium product that is very similar to things like double masters and people are going to look back like wow the value is just overloaded in this again it is very similar like Kanza Tarkir or Battle for Zendikar or um, some of these products that where the individual singles uh, might be stay stagnant or are super low for a long time but they have actually look like Kanza Tarkir Kaladesh that have been open like crazy the sealed versions of them actually have done quite well in comparison to the singles um, which is kind of a you know crazy how that works in in the mg market so uh, i do think that this is still the best buy for mod horizons 2 i think that you're if you're looking for a long-term investment this is one of them that is is going to be very very good i mean the only way that magic can actually uh surpass this as a good product is that they continue with that power creep and i don't think they have the option to do so there are a couple of hurdles that i think that magic the gathering is going to have and that's their power creep and that's also you know creating even crazier products i think they're gonna have to do like a little bit of a reset 
where they quit trying to put out these insane new products that keep people buying. I know they need to keep the shareholders happy, but I mean, at what point do they kill their brand or like, okay, maybe in two years, three years. And we've seen this in the past. We've seen kind of these like Amonkhet eras where it's like, oh, we can't do fetch lands and sets right now. Let's just, let's just push it back. We're going to have to struggle with sales for a bit. And then, you know, bank on in the future having some equity repin equity and and kind of that wow factor equity for sets so i think that that's going to happen soon and then these sets like the mod horizons 2 are going to look very very good uh going down the road anyway this video ended up being a little bit longer and i wanted it rambled a little bit too much here but these are my august uh p picks for magic there will be a companionship video for this for card uh accessories or other card games or board games that i do on my channel called gone rogue games where it is more about talking about the shop and other products I can get that are not magic. So if you are looking for that video, go over tomorrow over to the Gone Rogue Game channel and I'll have that out. As always, I appreciate everyone that comments and likes and subscribes. And yeah, all that helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching.